one of the wonderful things about being middle-aged is saying what you think with confidence and not worrying about the repercussions. So I think after 25 years in the industry, all of these experiences just built up and built up and built up. And then when I was asked to write uh, a speech for this Women of Letters program, and the, the title was Write a Letter to the Moment the Light Went On. And suddenly the light did go on for me, and I thought, I'm just sick of being treated like this. I'm going to say, I'm going to write a letter on behalf of all the women in the industry who've been through what I've been through. Well, wh when did the light go on for you? What, what happened to you? Oh, look, uh, to be honest with you, it was much worse say, 15, 20 years ago. It certainly has improved for women. But various, and if you have a look at the story on the AIDS website today, various things like news directors yelling out across the newsroom, I want two inches off your hair and two inches off your ass." Things like blondes are never taken seriously as newsreaders, you'll have to dye your hair darker. Comments like people don't want to hear the whingy, whiny voice of a woman on radio. Men get enough nagging at home. And oh, at the time, you, honestly, Neil, at the time you kind of laugh along and you think, oh, well, you know, they're just joking. And then over the years you think, no, this is actually endemic bullying and sexism and it has to be labelled for what it is. Television is much worse than radio. I think radio is probably worse than, than newspapers. The interesting thing is, since this went viral, this sort of went viral on social media, about a week ago, I've been cont contacted by so many young journalists who tell me that it is still happening. So perhaps it's not happening to me so much because I'm a little bit more bolshy and outspoken and a little bit older, but it's still happening to a lot of people and they feel they have no recourse. Visual medium, so obviously people are going to be judged on the way they look. However, if you look at the United Kingdom and the United States, women are allowed to age much more naturally, particularly in Britain than they are in Australia. And you're right, men are allowed to age, you know, perhaps 20 years older and still remain on the screen. There, there are comments. I know a male newsreader who had a chin implant in Sydney because he felt that he wasn't looking his best. But the pressure on women is still undoubtedly greater. See, this is the problem. I was 24. I didn't have the confidence to speak back or, or speak up, and I thought if I did, I'd lose my job. Now I have the confidence to do so, and retrospectively, I wish I had have said something. And do you know what's something interesting, Neil? I've had a lot of response to this piece from people within the industry, a lot of other experienced people in TV and radio, but they've responded to it privately. They haven't tweeted me publicly. They haven't put comments on websites because even now there is this fear that if they speak out, they'll never get a job in the industry again. Yeah, it's a real chicken and egg argument because even my husband and I sit at home and say, oh, I don't like that jacket that she's wearing tonight. <laughs> and yet when I get letters, you know, when I'm news reading at Sky these days about it, I think, oh, Oh, how facile. You should be concentrating on the story. So I think we all take in these things when we're watching television, but the important thing is that it doesn't overtake the importance of the news, the meaning of the news, and doesn't move into the realm of discrimination where someone is told, look, you, you simply can't remain on the screen because you are getting too old. I mean, we are an ageing population. We want to see ourselves reflected on the screen, you know, 50-50 men and women, and, and as we get older. Can I